Magandang hapon po, mga kapatid. School of Church Builder Alliance. Purihin po ang Panginoon at muli tayong binigyan ng pagkakataon ng Diyos na makapag-aral muli ng kanyang mga salita. At uh, gusto ko lang pong batiin ang ating mentor, Pastor Wilbert Butchal, Ate Hasmin, at ang buong Butchal family, at ang lahat po ng ECB Alliance. Pagpalain po tayo ng Panginoon. Isa pong napakalaking biyaya itong ating daily live streaming. Ang aking mga miyembro mismo, mga kasamahan sa Church Ambassadors for Christ, ay talagang we really appreciate po ang lahat ng effort ng ating mentor maging na mga kapastoran na palaging nagbibigay po ng mensahe tuwing hapon. Huwag po tayong mapagod sa paggawa ng mabuti. Huwag po tayong mapagod sa pangangaral ng salita ng Diyos. Because ang salita ng Diyos, kailanman hindi po babalik ng walang kabuluhan. Pagpalain po tayo ng Panginoon. So we are now in the part 2 of our uh, study about the winning the battle from the inside out. So last uh, topic natin, last time ay pinag-usapan natin, what are the source of our uh, uh, battles? Una ho, yung ating physical. So makita natin, yung physically, mayroon po tayong mga issues sa health, mayroon po tayong mga issues sa sickness, at minsan po ay talagang even death. So makita natin, pinakita natin ang mga scriptures na talagang uh, habang ang tao po ito matagal, man was destined to die. And sabi, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. So ito yan po katotohanan. Kaya nga, sinabi ni Pastor Wilbert, habang tayo malakas pa, habang tayo ay kaya pang bumiyahe, kaya pang magturo, gawin natin. At meron din pa ako isang pangaral na narinig ng sabi, kung ano man ang kaya mong gawin ngayon, at sa palagay mo, ito po ang magbibigay sa iyo ng kagalakan, lalo na kagalakan para sa Diyos. Huwag na po natin ipagpabukas. Gawin po natin kaagad. Why? Because we know the truth that whether we like it or not, the strength that we have ay ito po'y mawawala pagdating ng panahon. Pangalawa ho, financial struggle. Lagi natin tandaan that we have our Creator and our Creator God. God our Creator is our Father in the Spirit. At alam niyang lahat ng ating mga pangailangan. Patuloy, hindi po katulad ng mga pagano na talagang wala silang pagkakilala sa Diyos that is why, kung ano ang kanila mga inuuna, I always remember that things in this world are all temporary. Lagi natin tandaan. At mayroon tayong Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat, nagbibigay po sa atin ng ating pangailangan. Ako po, simple lang pong aking iniisip. Palaik ko lang sinasabi, I have my Creator, and my Creator knows all my needs. Para lang po yung kotse. Kung anong brand ng kotse, lahat ng patungkol sa kotse, alam niya lahat, at may piyesa siya lahat. At kung anuman ang problema ng kotse dahil siya ang gumawa, alam niya kung paano ito ayusin. Same thing with God. Example, we made wrong decisions, we have failures, but just come to God because He's our Creator. Siya ang ating manufacturer. Pag lumapit tayo sa Kanya, may sasayos po tayo. Another uh, source of problem is none other than our, uh, yung ating uh, emotional. So, di maiwasan po. Yung offense, palagi po nandyan yan. Bullying, Character assassination, lagi nating tandaan, kahit gaano kakabait, mayroong mga tao na hindi ka pa rin gusto. Realidad na yan sa mundo. That is why pag hindi mo yan intindihin, hindi mo yan, hindi mo yan malalaman, eh talagang ma ma maano ka rin, maapektuhan ka ba? Wala mo akong ginawang masama sa kanya. Bakit ganun siya magtrato sa akin? Bakit niya ako sinisiraan? It's part of our lives on earth. That is why we should be established, our emotions should be established according to the word of God. Kasi pag mayroong umaaway sa'yo na hindi po magandang treatment sa'yo, may sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. ano sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos? Mahalin mo yung kaaway. O di tapos. E may gumawa sa'yo ng masama. Ay, gawa mo na mabuti yung masama. Huwag mong i-overcome ang masama ng masama. I-overcome ang masama ng mabuti. At para mo nilalagyan ng ulo niya ng baga. Now, by the way, para po maintindihan natin ang kwento niya sa likod, Hindi naman yung gagawin mo, lalagay mo talaga literal na baga yung ulo. Eh. Gagawin, parang gagawin mo bibing ka. Hindi po ibig sabihin yan. Ang ibig sabihin mo, before po kasi, uh, ang kanila pong pinakailaw o ilawan ay yung mayroong baga. Ang ibig lang sabihin noon sa Israel, eh, pagka yung iyong kapitbahay ay nawawala na ng baga, eh, pwede mo siyang dalhan. Ano ibig sabihin? Kahit kaaway mo yan, eh, kung mag-brown out naman ang buhay niya at madilim, Yan ang pagkakataon mo na magkabati kayo dahil nadalan mo siya ng baga. Ganon din sa buhay natin. Kung mayroon mga hindi magandang gumagawa sa atin, regaluhan natin ng cake. Nasa Bible yan. Regaluhan mo ang iyong kaaway para kayo ay magkasundo. Huwag na tayo mag, mag, kung siya ngayon nagmatigas na, tayo pa magmatigas. That is why, yung emotional issues pwede natin may panalo using 
the principle of the Word of God. Another issue po sa atin, yung spiritual. Napag-usapan din natin ang spiritual issue, eh, talagang it is caused by the devil. Uh, okay, in the spirit, mayroong attacks, may schemes ang demonyo, mayroong complacency, mayroong mediocrity. Eh, yan pong lahat ng yan. Dito tayo nagtapos na, yun nga, eh, napag-usapan natin that uh, the flesh, ano, yung ibig sabihin, eh, yung spiritual na issue, hindi po yan nawawala hanggat nandito tayo. Hanggat nasa mundo tayo, there is always a devil who will attack us. So, wala siyang ibang gagawin. Kaya nga, ang role niya is kontrabida. At tayo naman, ang mga bida na mga anak ng Diyos, eh, sa akin, simple lang ko, ito pong ating karanasan ngayon, eh, scripted na ko ito. Hayaan nyo lang po ako na ikwento ito sa inyo. No? Yung buhay natin, no? simula na tayo silang hanggang sa ating kamatayan, eh, alam na po ng Diyos, meron ng script. May nakalagay na Bernard Perez, the true to life story of Bernard Perez. No? Mga ganun tipo, yung simula at ang dulo niyan, eh, alam na ng Diyos. Kaya nga yung between the, the, the beginning and the end, yung between niyan, in between, nandun yung climax. At ito yung tinatawag nating journey. From the beginning, nung tayo sililang hanggang sa ating destiny, ang tawag sa gitna ng journey. At dyan tayo. Ano? Dyan ang climax sa journey natin. Eh, minsan mukha natatalo. Minsan eh, mukhang akala mo, panalo na yung kalaban. Pero at the end of the day, lagi natin tandaan, bago mag the end, bago matapos ang kwento, bumabawi ho ang bida. At madalas ho, ang buhay sa dulo, sa isang magandang istorya, buhay ang bida, patay ang kontrabida. At yan na rin po, nakasulat na rin sa Bible. Isang araw, tayo po yung ma- pag tayo po yung mawala physically, dahil babalik sa lupa o babalik sa alikabok ang ating katawan, ang ating espiritu'y babalik sa Diyos at doon makakasama ng Panginoon. Magahari magpagailanman at ang demonyo naman. Na wala nang ibang ginagawa kundi manggulo sa atin, siya naman ay parurusahan doon sa walang hanggang kamatayan sa dagat-dagat ang apoy ng impyerno. Di ba napakaganda ng kwento. So ngayon, uh, what are the three major sources of troubles in, in the lives of God's people? So number one, the devil. So mahalaga ho na maintindihan natin that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Ito lang ang gagawin ng demonyo. Gamit ang kanyang tatlong major weapon. Last of the flesh, last of the eyes, and the pride of life. Ginamit niya yan sa mga lingkod ng Diyos, bagsak lahat maliban kay Jesus. Sa Matthew chapter 4, napahiya ang demonyo. Bakit? Lahat ng kanyang major weapon ay winasak ng Panginoon, pinahiya siya, gamit ang isang weapon ng Diyos. Walang iba kundi ang kanyang mga salita. Mga lawa. The world, ang mga bagay sa mundo at sa sanlibutan, ito ho ang isa sa major cause, one of the major causes that uh, give trouble to the life of the people. Why? Because all the things in this world will only awaken the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and even the pride of life. Kaya nilinaw ng uh, Panginoon through Apostle John and sabi, the world and its desires pass away. Everything in this world are temporary. Even our ministry, temporary lang yan sa atin. Because the moment na hindi na natin kaya, kailangan ma-raise up natin yung next generation. Kaya pasalamat sa Diyos, meron tayong ABG. I encourage you pastors to to support your uh, your young people in watching ABG. Bakit? Para ho, eh, madali nating maipasa sa kanila yung vision natin. Eh, mahirap ang mga ABG lang manonood. Wala yung pastor. Eh, mahirapan, mahirapan tayo sa, 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 ano, sa succession niya. Uh, succession niya. So, kailangan no, malinaw ito. And I, I thank you, uh, pastors, sa mga sumasabay po sa atin at uh, pinapad- pinapanood po yung inyong mga membro, ay eh, purihin po ang Panginoon, lalo mga young people. Ano? The world and its desires pass away, but the whoever does the will of God lives forever. Ito po ang isang napakagandang pangako ng uh, salita ng Diyos. Ano? ano pa ho? Uh, ano pa yung major cause ng trouble sa mga tao? Self and flesh. Dito tayo nag-end ng nakaraan. So sabi nito, so I, so I say walk, Galatians 5, 16-17, so I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. Dito tayo nag-end at sinasabi natin, lagi natin tandaan, if we do if we give in to the flesh and give pleasure to the flesh, what will happen? The only power that the devil has in a life of a person is none other than sin. So if sin is currently and strongly operating in the, lives of a per- in the life of a person, then that person is 
not only inviting but he is attracting devil to destroy him. Tingnan niyo ho mga parasyete eskriba. Talagang gamit na gamit sila ng demonyo. Bakit? Because they allow sin to be in operation in their lives. But The moment you walk in the Spirit, let your Spirit work with the Holy Spirit, what will happen? Then you are attracting God to release His favor and blessings upon you and empower you to live in the age of righteousness. And the moment we live in righteousness, hallelujah, we will, be, we will become vessel of honor, nagagamitin ang Panginoon in advancing His kingdom. Again, Tanda natin mabuti, mayroong ginagawa ang Diyos. Sa season na ito, at ang sabi sa Isaiah 26 verse 9, When your judgment comes, come on the world, people in the world learn righteousness. In this season, God is more concerned with, our, with the quality of our righteousness. Positionally, we were made righteous before God through the death of Christ. But physically, it should be reflected, it will become experiential righteousness so that may makikita mga tao. Tumingin pa sa akin, mga kapatid. Yung ating positional righteousness, hindi po nakikita ng mga tao yan. Kailangan yan mag-reflect sa ating buhay. Makikita kung anong nangyari. Point of reference, common ground yan ng mga mananampalataya, positional righteousness. Pero yung iba, pagka hindi po naunawaan, nag sa positional righteousness until such time na na-abuse ang kanilang positional righteousness, telling people, even if you commit sin, it's okay. Why? Because you are positionally made righteous before God. That's wrong. Kailangan yung positional righteousness ma-convert into experiential so that mayroong makikita mga tao na ang dating masama ay naging mabuti, ang dating pasaway ay naging masunurin. And that will convince them that when the Lord Jesus Christ entered into a life of a person, No matter how worse and bad that person is, the Lord Jesus Christ has the power to change and transform the life of that person. Malina ho? Now, uh, the truth is, the old sinful nature resides in our flesh. Kaya nga huwag natin pagbigyan ng ating laman. Kasi dito nakatira yung old sinful nature. It's just like a sleeping giant na pagpilit mong ginigising, it will cause destruction to you. Now, nawaan ho natin, Bakit may mga nagbabackslide? Bakit may mga nanghihina? Bakit mga dating ginagamit na biglang nawala? Why? Simple. Flesh. It's the flesh. Kaya nga, if you will not, if you will uh, allow yourself to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, you allow yourself to be empowered by the Word of God, not just a simple word, but a sharp and strong messages, what will happen? It will realign, readjust your feet, readjust your spirit, to the word of God. At anong mangyayari? If you're living according to His word, what happened? God now can empower you. And the old sinful nature will become a slave. Are you now? And your spirit will become the boss together with the Holy Spirit and your emotion will become the assistant. So what happened? Every time na may sinasabi ang Holy Spirit sa spirit mo, binababa mo sa emotion mo, sa soul mo, at walang magawa ang flesh mo kundi sumunod. Bigyan ko po kayo na example. Before nung hindi pa tayo mananampalataya, wala tayong panahon makinig sa mga ganitong pangangaral. Why? Because the boss is the flesh. Anong gusto nito? Yung mga walang kakwenta-kwenta, basurang mga palabas sa sanlibutan. Ito ang gusto nito. About God? Nako. Ayaw nito. Pero nung nakilala natin ang Panginoong Jesus na buhay ang ating Espiritu, yung patay na Espiritu nung pumasok si Kristo, He is the way, the truth, and the life became alive. Buhay ang ating Espiritu, nagsimulang tumanggap ng mga salita ng Diyos. Nagka-problema si flesh. Bakit? Kasi every time na meron siyang gustong gawin, may kumukontra na sa Kanya. That is why struggle is real for true believers inside them. Kaya kami ng Diyos, pinadala rito mga kapatid, mga pastor, para mangaral sa inyo at sabihin, build yourself strong in the word. Build yourself strong in the faith. Build yourself strong in the spirit. So that you will not do the works of the flesh. At sa oras na ito ay naging alipin, nagiging slave. Wala lang itong sasabihin. Sa, sa, wala itong ibang sasabihin sa Holy Spirit at sa Spirito mo. Yes sir. Yes boss. Susunod na lang ito. At napapansin nyo? Our mentor, Pastor Wilbert, created a 
kingdom culture every 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Mayroon tayong daily live streaming. Wala kayo napupuna. Itong pasaway na flesh mo, nagiging masunuri na, hinahanap niya na, ay alas 5 na, tigilan mo na ako sa trabaho, gagawa, titingnan ko muna kayong ano, manunod muna ako. Napapasin niyo? Napapasunod naman ito eh. But first, you need to build your spirit strong in the word, in the faith, and in the spirit. Are now? We should identify the source of our battle so that we can apply the right dealings in every battle that we are facing. Maybe, We always rebuke and accuse the devil while in fact, it is us, our flesh, who go against the will of God. Yan palagi sinasabi ni Pastor Wilbert, di ba? Minsan na pagkakamalan natin, demonyo may gawa. Without our knowledge, it is no longer the devil, it is no longer the world, but it is our flesh. So anong gagawin natin? Napakasimple mga kapatid ang sinasabi ng Bible. Walk in the Spirit so that you will not fulfill or gratify the works of the flesh. Malinaw? At pag ang ispirito na natin ang napagtibay, nagiging established at in operation, hallelujah! Walang magawa ang flesh, kundi tumino at sumunod sa Holy Spirit na nakiisa sa ating ispirito. What should we do? Number one, be alert and sober. Okay, be alert and sober in mind. Your enemy, the devil, pros like a roaring lion. So dito, sinasabi nito, resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that the family believers throughout the world is undergoing the same sufferings. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, a little while will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power and forever and ever. Amen. If we live in righteousness, If we live in holiness according to the word of God, then we are giving God a free hand, a reason. Ang sabi, He Himself will restore us, will make us strong, firm, and steadfast. What should we do to overcome the flesh? Submit yourself and draw near to God. James 4, 7 to 8, Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and He will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Sabi ko, Lord, paano pumasok yung double-minded? Simple lang. Tingnan natin ito, itong repentance. Balikan lang natin ng kaunti. Repentance, sa Greek, ay ito po ay uh, change of mind. From sinfulness to holiness. From wickedness to righteousness. At pag titingnan mo sa Hebrew, nakalagay, I don't know, ako napagpalit ko, no, pero ito ibig sabihin ng dalawa eh. Sabi naman sa Hebrew, it is turning away. Change, change of mind and then turning away. Making a decision to turn away from sin and turn to God. Pag isa lang ako kunin mo sa dalawa, medyo yung definition ay uh, pag Greek lang, change of mind lang. Pagka uh, turning away, Medyo, ang maganda, pag samay mo yung Greek at Hebrew definition of repentance, it is turn, change of mind and turning away from sin. Kompleto siya. Ang problema, bakit naging double-minded? Why? Because, pag hindi mo natin true repentance is not going back to sin again. That is why, pagka hindi mo natin din, ano nangyayari? All parts of your body and even your Christianity and spirituality will be affected. If you do not fully understand what repentance is all about, what is repentance? Not coming back or going back to sin again. If you repent from your sin, you will change your mind not to commit the same sin, not to commit sin again, and you will turn away from sin and you turn to God. That is the Complete meaning of repentance. At pag hindi mo ito naunawaan, you, see, you repent, repeat, repent, repeat, 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 ano nangyayari? You are causing trouble to yourself. At dito lumalabas kang double-minded. Why? Because you please God during Sundays and you insult and violated God during Mondays and Saturdays. You are a double-minded. And if you are a double-minded believer, do not expect anything good from God. 
Because God will not release His blessing to a double-minded man. To blikara ka. Naunawa naman na, kapatid. And the only way for us to win the battle from the inside out, we should submit ourselves and always draw near to God. Kasi ho, kung sino po yung sinasubmitan mo ng sarili mo, kanino ka nagpapasakop, under ka ng kanyang authority at covering. And if you submit yourself to God, what will happen? Then, you can easily resist the devil. Ang demonyo, parang katulad kayo ng mga anak na eskiva, di ba? Pag si Pablo nagsabi, in the name of Jesus, layas, walang magawa ang demonyo, kundi umalis. Bakit? It is not because of Paul, but it is the life behind the one rebuking them. Nakita nila, oh, the life of this man is really connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's, he's uh, manifesting a Christ-like life. Ang nakikita ng mga demonyo, hindi naman si Pablo, kundi si Kristo na nakay Pablo. Wala silang Diyos, kundi lumayas. Eh, mga anak na eskiba, nagbida-bida. Hindi Christ-like, Hindi ko na alam, hindi ko na sasabihin kung anong like sila. Alam mo na, ibig ko sabihin, ano? Eh, wala silang Christ-likeness. Ang demonyo, tingnan niyo ako mga kapatid. Every time you declare something, even if you are praying for something, wala siyang pakalam sa prayer mo. Ang, pin, ang, ang, ang mahalaga sa kanya, yung quality ng buhay na nagpipray. Wala siyang pakalam sa rebuke, sa rebuking, sanay naman ma-rebuke yan, sanay rin yan masaktan. Pero ang kanyang concern ay yung life behind the one rebuking, behind the one praying. That is why in the age of righteousness, this is the year, this is the year of the sin age. The sin age will end and the beginning of the year of the end, the, the beginning of the age of righteousness. At pag nangyari na ito mga kapatid, welcome to the double decade of an open heaven. Bukas ang langit sa mga taong nabubuhay sa katuwiran. Palaging bukas ang langit. Alala ko palagi ang definition ni Pastor Wilbert about open heaven na nag-preach sa amin dito sa aming anniversary and sabi niya, what is open heaven? One of the definition of open heaven is where the provision, protection, the presence of God and the power, the empowerment of God is always available every time you need it. That is open heaven. And it is good to understand this afternoon that the year of prevailing and governing will be made possible Because we are living a righteous life and the moment we live a righteous life, then we have all the reason to live under an open heaven where provision, protection, the presence of God and the empowerment or the power of God is always available every time we need it. Hallelujah. What should we do? Cast all your cares on Him. Okay? Paano bang gagawin natin sa flesh na ito? Pag ito po ay, pag tayo po ay nasa struggle na sa ating kalooban, madalas po yung mga concerns natin sa buhay na ito, 1 Peter 5.7, what, what the Bible says, Cast all your cares or anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Oh, what a powerful verse. Cast all your cares or anxiety on Him because He cares for you. For you. Ano pong ibig sabihin sa ating Pinoy na usapan? Ip, uh, ipagkatiwala ninyo sa kanya ang lahat ng inyong pasanin dahil siya ay nagmamahal sa iyo. Pasanin in English is load. So ano ibig sabihin? Cast all your anxiety, pasa load. Pasa load kay Lord. O ganun lang kasimple yun. Bakit? Mahal ka ni Lord eh. Ano gagawin mo para manalo ka sa battle mo? Ma Dapat alam mo tong Isang strategy na ito. Just do what you can do, what you cannot do, God will do for you. So, pag kaya mo, rapahuin mo, ini-expect ng Diyos, gagawa ka. Ini-expect ng Diyos, gagampanan mo ang tungkulin mo. But things that are beyond our control, just like this COVID-19, this is beyond our control. Let God do His thing. Let God napuksain ang virus na ito. So, ano mangyayari? Pag mabigat na ang pasanin, pasa load kay Lord. Mau sila tayo magpasa ng load sa cellphone eh. Marunong ka rin magpasa load kay Lord. Para ano? Because, at sabi niya, cast all your cares upon Him for He cares for you. Come to me, those who are labor and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Gusto na Diyos kukunin yung load natin. Kasi pag yung load natin is beyond our limit, how overload tayo. Alam ng Diyos, parang manufacturer, pakinig po kayo mga kapatid, ang kotse ho, 
Halimbawa, kotse siya. Si Dan. Halimbawa. Apat lang ang kapasidad niyan. Ma ang ang pinaka-maximum niyan, lima. Pero kung apat lang ang sumakay, mai-enjoy mo yung pleasure at saka service convenience ng kotse. Bakit? Yun ang design niyan. Nagkaunawan tayo. At kung mapapansin mo, sa gilid ng kotse, meron nakalagay yan yung load limit. Intendin niyo pa ako sinasabi. Alam ng manufacturer ng sedan o ng kotse yung load limit. That is why pag yung kotse ay pinagsakyan mo ng mga wrestler na kasing laki nila batista at mga malalaking wrestler, sinasabi ko sa iyo, sabog ang mga ano niyan, ang mga gulong, wasak ang mga upuan niyan. Bakit? Overload or overloaded. Makinig kayo sa akin. Alam ng Diyos yung load ng bawat siya sa atin. Depende ho sa abot ng ating pananampalataya. So kung anuman ang problema o pagsubok na meron ka ngayon, tandaan mo kapatid, hindi ka ng Diyos i-overload. Yung load na meron ka, kayang-kaya mo. Pero pag naramdaman mo na hindi mo na kaya, mayroon na siyang antidote. Mayroon na siyang recommendation. Cast all your cares. Bakit all? Akala ko ba, Pastor, eh, yung hindi ko lang kaya. Eh, nakita na Diyos na bigatang ka na eh. Alam niyo ho, tatay yan eh. Tatay si Lord eh. Alam niya kung paano gagawin. Ako, pag nakita ko yung mga anak ko, kaya pa nila, sige, ayaan ko lang. Pero pag hindi na nila kaya, nakita ko, hirap na hirap na sila. Kukunin ko lahat ng load nila. Kukunin ko yung problema. So, solusyonan ko para ano, yung kanilang panahon ng paghihirap ay maibsan pag kinuha ko na. Same thing with God. If you are suffering for a long, long time and you heard this message this afternoon, just cast all your cares to God. Why? Because this is the time. This is your time to arise. Why? Because God will deliver you from all the sufferings that you are in right now. Maybe sickness, maybe financial issues, maybe emotional. The Lord will now deliver you. But you have to cast all your cares to Him. Amen. All your cares. Cast it all to Him. Why? Because you are suffering it for a long, long time. Oh, what a blessing. What should we do? Establish the rule of God in our lives to secure our protection and provision. Anong gagawin natin? Establish the rule of God in our lives to secure our protection and provision. Matthew 6.33 to 34, it says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. See? Anong ating unahin? Ano yung first? Makinig kayo mabuti, mga kapatid. Catch the revelation now. But seek first his kingdom. Hindi lang kingdom ang first. Pag kayo po'y nag-aaral ho ng English, makikita nyo, and his righteousness. Ibig sabihin, even his righteousness, you should seek it first. Sa ating kasi, pagka Nagbasa tayo, ang palagi natin inuunang isisik yung the rule of God. Tama naman yun. But do not forget, His righteousness is also first. Dapat sinabi niya, but seek first His kingdom, second His righteousness. Walang nakalagay na second. And, ang ibig sabihin, equally important with the kingdom is His righteousness. Oh, I pray na nakuha po natin ito. That is why, we, hindi... Ah, pag sinasabing, but seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, ibig sabihin, equally important yung dalawa. And this and His kingdom, His rulership and righteousness are inseparable. Malinaw. You cannot be ruled by God if you are not living a righteous life. And you can never be righteous if you are not being ruled by God. That is why you cannot divorce the two. His Kingdom, rulership, and righteousness are inseparable. Malinaw, mga kapatid. At anong mangyayari pag inuna mo ang kingdom of God at saka yung righteousness niya na inseparable? And all these things will be given to you as well. Ang pinanggit doon, pagkain, inumin, daramtin. But in reality, all the things you need in life in the ministry, in your body, everything about you compasses, it compasses all 
all the things. But first, take note the word first. But seek first. When you speak about seeking, you need to spend time. When you speak about seeking, you need to be patient. When you speak about seeking, it needs perseverance. When you speak about seeking, it speaks of right priority. Alinaw? Eh, wala eh. Sinasabi natin, but seek, seek first the kingdom of God. And then, pangalawa yung righteousness. Hindi ho pangalawa. These two are equally important. You seek first His kingdom. Pinaliwanag na sa atin ni Pastor Wilbert, it speaks of God's rulership in our lives. And, hindi second. Okay? Hindi secondly, His righteous. No, 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 no. You can never be ruled by God without living a righteous life. And you can never be righteous without being ruled by God. At pag nangyari ito, na parehong first ang kingdom, ang rulership ng God at ang kanyang righteousness, expect provisions from heaven, open heaven, all, not some, not many, but all these things which will be given to you as well. Ano yun? Yung mga kinahuhumalingan ng mga, mga taong walang pananalig sa Diyos. That is why, very clear sa Bible, the wealth of the wicked will be transferred into the hands of the righteous. Seek first His righteousness. Seek first His rulership, His kingdom. Napansin niyo? Kaya hindi mo pwedeng gawing second ang righteousness. It should be first. Inseparable. Yung dalawang yan. At lahat na pangailangan mo, yung kinahumalingan ng mundo, Bonus lang yan pag inuna mo na hanapin i-prioridad, pagtsagaan, maging pasensyoso, unahin. Ang alin? Ang pag ng Diyos at ang kanyang katuwiran. At lahat ng kinahuhumalingan ng mga tao sa buong mundo, darating sa iyo. It will be added, it will be given. No sweat. Kung alam lang sana ng lahat, tapos ang struggle natin sa mga buhay natin. Therefore, in conclusion, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. You will live one day at a time. Why? Because what is more important, what is first to you, is to live in holiness and righteousness. What is first to you is to secure the rulership of God over your life. Hindi mo na mapapansin yung mga pangailangan mo. Pag sinasabing, ah, ito may kailangan tayo sa bukas, ito yung ano, hindi mo na hanapin yung pangailangan sa bukas. Bakit? Sa araw na ito, sapat na ang Diyos. Sa presensya ng Diyos, higit sa sapat ang presensya ng Diyos. Higit sa pangailangan, higit sa anumang bagay sa mundo niyo. Pero magandang kanta, di ba? Walang tao, walang bagay. Ano yun? Walang tao, walang bagay, na hihigit sa iyo, may ligaya, Sa piling mo, O oh Diyos. Dapat ganun tayo. I, I love that song, you know. Sana ito po yung nanumbalik sa atin. E minsan tayo, ba? puro na rin tayo mga high-tech, uh, mga songs natin, mga bago. You know, there are songs in the past, even Dr. Jonathan David, you know, yung uh, may mga songs din siya na, no? Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Alam nyo, mayroong mga sinasabing old songs. Actually, wag nating i-label ng old song yan. Because if it is the song of God and song for God, walang old sa kanyo. As long that it ministers to you and in your spirit and it draws you closer to God, there's no such thing as old and new song. If it is the song for God and the song of God ay mga kapatid. It will cause transformation and revival over our lives. Again, His kingdom, rulership, and righteousness should be seek first by God's people. These two are inseparable. How to secure our victory? So pinakita sa atin kung paano tayo mag-cope up doon sa issues of flesh. So, this time, Paano natin isi-secure yung victory natin? Having these uh, recommendations, okay? Itingnan po natin, ano? Okay, uh, 
Ha, paano natin isi-secure ang victory natin? Okay, kasi pinapakita natin kanina, what should we do? Dito sa tatlong major causes ng trouble sa atin. So be alert and sober. Ano pa? Uh, submit yourself and draw near to God. Ano pa? Cast all your cares on Him. Ano pa? Establish the rule of God in our lives. The rule of God and His righteousness over our lives to secure our protection and provision. This time, how to secure our victory? Ito po ay napag-usapan na natin madalas at ay tituro ng ating mentor. Pero this is just a reminder. And not just a reminder, but it should be applied in our lives. So that the grace to govern and the power to prevail will be received by the people of God, especially in our ECB Alliance. Napakahalaga po nito. So, I will be explaining to you the process, the protocol, and the principle of shepherding. Now, tingnan natin. How to secure our victory? Number one, we should properly observe and establish the principle of God's accurate pattern of shepherding over our lives. Hindi tayo makamove on sa ibang mga principles kung hindi mo na natin ma-establish ito. Why? Because this is the major uh, the major uh, reason para ho yung mga susunod na mga principles sa pag-aaralan natin ay magiging effective. Kasi first things first, we should establish, we should properly observe and establish the principle of God's accurate pattern of shepherding over our lives. Are you ready? So simulan natin sa the truths that we should know. Kailangan malalaman natin ang katotohanan. Nano, in John chapter 10 verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Sabi ni Lord, I am the good shepherd. But there are thief, or the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. It speaks about the enemy or the instruments of the devil. That wala silang ibang gagawin kundi mag Pero sabi ng Panginoon, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Ako ay naparito pang mga tupay bigyan ng buhay na ganap at kasiya-siya. My friends, ito yung katotohanan At ito yung plano ng Diyos at lagi natin tandaan, when God said something, when God declared something, walang plan B ang Diyos. Mayroon lang ang Diyos plan A. Period. Walang plan B, walang plan C. Kaya pag sinabi niya, no alteration, no addendum, no revision. Final yan. Na siya'y naparito para bigyan tayo ng buhay na ganap. Perfect. At kasiya-siya. Joyful. Full of joy. Ano pa ho? Ang plano ng Diyos. Para maintindihan natin, malaman ang katotohanan. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Alinaw pa po sa sikat ng araw. No alteration, no revision, no addendum. Final. Ang plano ng Diyos, una, pagpalain tayo. Pasaganain tayo. At hindi tayo saktan not to harm you. Bakit sinabi? Ba't sinabi ng Diyos sa planeto? Because there's a big tendency. Pag ang tao ay hindi nababad sa salita ng Diyos at hindi lumalakad sa katuwiran at naalang, naintindihan ng Diyos at nakita ng Diyos na malaki at mataas ang tendency because of the surroundings that we are, where we are moving, the influence of the world, the system of the world, pwede tayo maapektuhan minsan. But again, Because the prophecy, the prophetic word, the prophetic declaration had been released already to us that under the double decade of an open heaven, the sin age will end and the beginning of age of righteousness begins. Malinaw! So, itong plano ng Diyos, hindi ito magbabago. Pagprotesta man ang buong impyerno at demonyo, walang mga, wala silang magagawa. Bakit? Na ang nasabi ng Diyos, nasabi niya. E kung sa laman nga eh, pag nasabi ng hari, hindi na babali. How much more ang Diyos? Walang sinasabi ang Panginoon, for I know the plans I have declares the Lord to prosper and to harm you and to give you hope in a future if. Walang if. Pagdating sa future period. Sa mga nag-aaral ng English at ng grammar, alam natin yan. Pag period na, that's it. Final. Malinaw. So walang alteration to, walang revision. Ganito yun. 
Wala nang ano, wala nang no questions asked, no more debate. Final yan. Ganda yun, no? Ano pa? The truth that we should know. Philippians 1.6 Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Ang siyang nagpasimula ng gawain ito sa iyo ay tapat na tatapusin hanggang sa pagdating ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Hallelujah! Ibig sabihin, hanggat buhay tayo, kung anong sinimulan ng Diyos sa atin, tatapusin niya. Sinimulan na ba tayo ng Diyos? Amen! Yes, nung tinanggap natin siya, nagsimula na siyang kumilos at lagi nating tandaan, ipaproject ka ng Diyos. Pag ang Diyos mayroong project, if God do something, He is a God who do not live unfinished business. What He had started, He will surely finished. Kaya nga, maintindihan natin. Kaya sabi ni Pablo, I am confident of this, that He who began a good work in you will carry to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Hanggang sa pagdating ng Panginoon. Kung iba sa atin, eh, dumabot pa sa pagbabalik ng Panginoon, eh, praise the Lord. Pero yung iba sa atin, hindi naaabot sa pagdating ng Panginoon at uh, mauuna na, kukunin na ng Diyos hanggat buhay ka. Kasi ang usapan hanggang sa pagbalik ng Panginoon. Eh, hanggat ikaw ay umabot sa pagbalik ng Panginoon, maging tapat pa rin ang Diyos sa iyo. Lagi ang tandaan. Pag tayo po'y sinimulang iproseso ng Diyos at ang Diyos simulang may ginawa sa ating buhay at ako'y naniniwala, lahat naman tayo may ginawa ang Diyos sa buhay natin. It doesn't mean na kung anong kalalagayan mo ngayon, yan na yung final. Hindi po, kapatid. Kung hindi mo pa narating ang destiny mo, hindi, tumi- hindi titigil ang Diyos at ang Holy Spirit na ipoproseso tayo at mag-create ng mga senaryo at mag-create ng mga event sa buhay natin which will lead us to His for the completion of His plans and purposes over our lives. Amen? So kung nandun tayo sa suffering ngayon, hindi yan ang end. Because the the end of every believer is always glorious. Now, tingnan niyo ako mabuti. E paano yung iba pa sa namatay sa ganito? It's not our problem. It is God's will, a will and way. But for us, na nakareceive ng kapahayagan ito, under a double decade of an open heaven, I strongly believe, even the prophetic word declared by Dr. Jonathan David for 2021, you will be amazed. The seven dimensions of God's presence, doon pa lang, italagang mag-overflow at mabibless ka ng gusto. Tinagtangan pa at declaration pa na ating vision keeper sa ACB, uh, Pastor Wilbert Buchalon, sabi, this is the year of governing and prevailing. Anong ibig sabihin? Governing and prevailing. There is a battle that we need to face. But the good news is, bago dumating ang 2021, before 2021, at December 2020, nailabas na ang declaration. At ito'y kompas at guide natin na kahit anong mangyari, we shall prevail, we shall govern. The question is, how? Yan ang sasagutin natin sa pag-aaral natin ngayon. Now, God's process and protocol in fulfilling His word. What are the word of God? He will uh, give us life, abundant life. Ano pa? He has a wonderful plan for us to prosper us, not to harm us, but to give us hope and a future. Ano pa? Ang kanyang sinimula, what he had started, he will surely finish. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. How to fulfill the word of God? God's process and protocol in fulfilling his word. He is the chief shepherd. Para mangyari yung mga plano ng Diyos, kailangan siya ang maging pastol natin. Kasi tayo pong mga tao'y tinulad niya sa tupa na nangailangan ng pastol because the safest place for a sheep is to be with his shepherd. Sabi sa Psalms 23.1, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Very clear revelation from the Word of God. Pag ang Diyos ang namumuno at nagpapastol sa atin, kailanman hindi tayo magkukulang. Purihin ang Diyos. Now, God's process and protocol in shepherding. Sino si Lord? He is a good shepherd. He is the chief shepherd. At pag siya ang ating pasod, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Now, papano ng Diyos ito implement sa panahon natin ngayon? Psalm 77 verse 20 in the Living Bible, it says, You lead your people along the road like a flock of sheep. With 
Moses and Aaron as their shepherds. Malinaw. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Pero para may implement yun sa buhay natin, sa Living Bible, sa Psalm 77 verse 20, you lead your people along the road like a flock of sheep. He's shepherding his people. Sa papano? With Moses and Aaron as their shepherd. So the Lord, the protocol and the principle and the process of God's word in shepherding is he will lead us through a human shepherd. Malinaw. Linawin pa natin. God's process and protocol in shepherding. These are the proof that God is shepherding us through a human shepherd given by God over our lives. John 21, 15-17 When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you, Jesus said. Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my ship. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Ako po'y mangungusap sa aking mga kapwa pastor. Alam niyo ho, bilang pastor, eh, wala po tayong ibang iniisip kung di mapapalago ang ating mga miyembro, ang simbahan na pinagkatiwala sa atin ng Diyos ay papalaki, papalago, at minsan po, pag hindi po tayo maingat, baka ito yung nagiging basihan natin na masasabi natin sa Diyos na Lord, ginampanan ko po ang tungkulin na binigay niyo po sa akin. But in this passage, gusto ng Diyos ipakita more than doing our responsibility and accountability. We should be driven. We should be love-driven. Naunawan po natin, we should be driven by our love for God. At ang tanging paraan para mapatunayan natin, mga pastor, kapwa ko pastor, na mahal natin ang Diyos. Sabi ng Panginoon, Peter, do you love me? Mahal mo ba ako? Yes, Lord, sabi ni Peter. Sabi niya, feed my lambs. When you speak about a lamb, ito yung mas bata na tupa. Naunawaan po, kapatid. Isa sa expression na acceptable, admittable sa Diyos, na mahal natin siya at patunay, proof na mahal natin siya. Kung pinapakain natin ng mga sariwang minsahe ng salita ng Diyos, ang kanyang mga maliliit na tupa. Tinanong siya ulit, do you love me? ano sabi? Take care of my ship. Protektahan natin sila. Laban sa kasinungalingan ng demonyo, sa mga atake ng jablo we will serve as their covering just to protect them and take care of them. One way of taking care sa mga sa mga miyembro naman, mga leaders, workers, magandang po kayo mabuti. Isa ho, sa pag-aalaga ng mga pastor sa inyo, ay kayo po'y disiplinahin. I-rebuke, i-correct, i-train, turuan. At kasama ho, sa pagtuturo, ay ang disiplina. Kaya don't get us wrong. Pag ang pastor ay mahigpit sa iyo, pag ang pastor ay talagang parang ino-offend ka, it's part of the training. I have a uh, dalawa po na mga babae marines na miyembro po ako. I love talking with them. Tinanong ko, ano bang training? Mayroong isang, yung isang mas senior na marines ang sabi niya, pastor, hinampas po kami ng boots sa mukha. Sabi ko, ba't naman ginawa sa inyo yun? Kasi ang training ng Marines, talagang sila kasi yung nasa operation in the ground. Na kung sila'y mahuli ng kaaway, God forbid, talagang walang kantahan, hindi mo ikanta kung saan yung mga kasama mo, ano yung mga dahilan, ano yung mga patungkol sa grupo mo. Talagang ready sila for torture. At doon pinakita, eh, talagang grabe ang training na inabot nito. To the extent, Ito naman yung sinasabi nila. You know, at, uh, this is true naman. Ang sabi niya, dumating ang punto na hindi na sila dinaknan sa tindi ng training. Now, para sa lahat ng training na to? Training is to make you fit. 
make you fit for the assignment prepared for you. Kaya ang mga pastor, trabaho namin, kasi maganda pakinggan eh, take care of my sheep. Pag hindi to maintindihan ng mga tao sa church, ang iisipin nila, dapat mahalin lang kami ng pastor, di kami dapat pinapagalitan, hindi dapat kami dinidisiplina, mahalin kami kasi na nakalagay, take care. Alam niyo ba, ang tunay na taking care or tender loving care is yung paluin ka, disiplinahin ka. Kasi pag puro tender loving care, magiging spoiled ka. At pa naging spoiled ka, delikado. Bakit? Kasi pag ang mga ang mga anak na spoiled, nagkokos ng trouble sa kanilang mga magulang. That is why part ang pinakamabisang tender loving care is kung nag kung kailan nagkamali at mayroong maling ginawa ang anak. Dapat binibigyan ng correction. Pag hindi nakuha sa correction, ire-rebuke. Pag hindi nakuha sa rebuke, i-correct. Pag hindi nakuha sa correct, iti-train na naroon ng discipline. Nagkaunawaan po tayo. Because God is not raising spoiled children, but He is raising accountable sons. Because only sons are entitled of the inheritance. Malinaw. So pastors, this is the proof of our love for God. We feed our people with the current With the now word, with the proceeding word. Pag sinasabi proceeding word, the word for the season. What God is doing in the season, the word that you release will enable them to align themselves. God. Alinaw? Okay. Uh, tuloy tayo. In 1 Peter, the Lord Jesus Christ is the chief shepherd. Your pastor is the under shepherd. Pakinggan niyo pa mabuti. The elders among you, 1 Peter 5, 1-4, I appeal as a fellow elder and as a witness of Christ's sufferings who also will share in the glory to be revealed, be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those who entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Listen to me carefully. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory and that will never fade. So God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the chief shepherd. Your pastor is the under shepherd. Now, the kind of grace that your grace carrier can release to you. What is that kind of grace? It is God's grace. Now, makinig mabuti, ha? In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Where is the grace of God? In Christ Jesus. Question, mga kapatid. Where is Jesus now? According to Romans chapter 8, Jesus was seated, uh, Romans 8, 32-34, Jesus was seated at the right hand of God, interceding for us. Where is He now? In heaven. How can we access God's grace if Christ Jesus is already in heaven and we are here on earth? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2, Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. So the grace of God was now is now deposited. In the case of Paul to the Gentiles, it was deposited by God in the life of Apostle Paul because God ordained him or commissioned him to become the minister to the Gentiles. In our case, If you are, if you belong to a church and you have the you have a pastor, your pastor is the depository of God's grace for your life. That is why very clear, yung strong and accurate connection to the carrier of your grace, because the grace, the kind of grace that he carries, is not a simple grace. It is not his grace, but it is God's grace deposited in him. Alina. 1 Timothy 1.14, it says, The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Sinabi ni Pablo, abundantly flowing yung God's grace of God. The grace of our Lord. Who is the Lord Jesus Christ? Full of grace. Where is the grace? God's grace in the Lord Jesus Christ? But He is already in heaven. So anong kailangan gawin? He poured it out to the life of Paul. Same thing. Tingnan niyo pa ako mabuti. Ang inyong pastor, sabi ni Pastor Wilbert, ang mga pastor ay hindi perfect. 
Pero kung mayroon man siyang weaknesses or inaccuracies na makita ka, kung sa iyo man yang pinakita, ibig sabihin ikaw ang may kakayahan na ito po'y tugunan. Hindi para siya ay tirahin o hindi para siya ay uh, ipahiya, kundi pinakita sa iyo yan para ikaw ang mag-cover. Bakit? Because you know that even if your pastor is not perfect, he carry God's grace that you need for you to overcome. Sabi nga po sa 2 Chronicles 20.20, Believe in the Lord and you will be upheld. Believe in His prophets or in His servants and you will be successful. Even the success that you need is also deposited by God in the life of your pastor. Malinaw na mga kapatid. At ito ang protocol at proseso na dapat natin ma-establish if we want to receive the grace to govern and the power to prevail. Because the kind of grace that will make you govern is none other than God's grace. Where is God's grace? Malinaw pa sa sikat ng araw, diniposito ng Diyos sa buhay ng pastor mo. And if you have the grace of God, you, the grace to govern, it will be easy for you to prevail. Now, look at me now. What is God's grace? According to Pastor Wilbert Bochal, it is God's power and ability working in you for you to become what God wants you to be. Malinaw. Ito po'y palaging sinasabi ni Pastor Wilbert. It is God's power and ability working in you for you to become what God wants you to be. Another definition of God's grace, it is God's power and ability working through you for you to do what God wants you to do. In this year of prevailing and governing, it is very important. Ito ang pinaka major thing na dapat natin establish because whether we like it or not, some of us are not yet strongly connected, accurately connected to the career of our grace, our pastor. Ang iba sa atin, tinitinan lang yung pastor pag linggo, nangangaral, o nagla-live stream. But when it comes to accurate and strong connection, tanda natin mga kapatid, it is only through connection and Strong connection and relationship where impartation takes place. No connection, no strong and accurate connection and relationship, no impartation. There should be honoring in the relationship. Now, let us read Psalms 23 verse 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So God's pattern of shepherding again, Psalm 77 verse 20. Living Bible, you lead your people along the road like a flock of sheep with Moses and Aaron as their shepherd. Now, pag binasa mo ngayon ang Psalm 23 verse 1, magkakaroon na ng accuracy ngayon yung, yung iyong uh, interpretation. The Lord is my shepherd. Correct. But how the Lord shepherd you? Through a human shepherd in the life of your pastor. Malina ho. So the difference shepherds or the pastor can make in the life of an obedient ship. By the way, this message is only for the obedient ship. If you're not obedient to your pastor, habang nakikinig ka sa akin ngayon, mag-change ka na ng attitude mo at karakter, maging obedient ka sa pastor mo para mapartake mo ang mga blessing na ito. Number one, he can make you live and experience an abundant life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Eh, pastor si Lord nga yan eh. Kaya nga, si Lord ang shepherd. Pero, mag, si shepherd siya sa'yo sa pamamagitan ng human shepherd na walang iba kundi pastor mo. So, anong kayang gawin ng pastor mo? He will make you live and experience an abundant life. Your prosperity, the keys and strategies for your prosperity was already deposited by God in the life of your pastor. Si Pastor Rachi, magandang example ang sabi niya. Si Pastor Wilbert, hindi naman businessman. Pero pag mayroon kaming problema sa business, mayroon kaming gustong ma-achieve sa business, kinukonsulta namin ka, Pastor, although he is not a businessman, but because he carry 
the keys and strategies for them to prosper. Dinadala nila kay Pastor, nagkaroon sila ng bagong idea at strategia. Ano nangyayari? They were able to close the deal and they increase in their business. This is what your pastor can do to you. Pangalawa, he can make you live a satisfied life. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in path of righteousness for his name's sake. Alam niyo ho, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Hindi lang kakain doon. Pwede kang humiga. Ano ibig sabihin? Yung makahilata ka, sobrang relax, eh talagang satisfied ka. Ito yung kayang gawin ng pastor mo. When it comes to spiritual nourishment, eh talagang sobrang satisfied ka. At yung spiritual nourishment na nire-release niya will align your life to the works of God, will align your life to the word of God, will align your life to the ways of God and the will of God. What will happen? Then blessings after blessings will come to you. And these blessings will not only over, will not only uh, it will will not only fill you, but it will overflow in your life until one day, until such time you will be satisfied by it. Ano pa ho, number three, he can make you live a strong life. Nasa Psalm 23 lang po tayo, verse 4, Even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You rod and your stop, they comfort me. Anong ibig ko sabihin? Your pastor can make you live a strong life because he can secure the presence of God. Tingnan niya kung mabuti. Ang demonyo ho ay parang leon o parang uh, uso o uh, asong gubat na naglalaway, nakainin ng tupa. But as long as the sheep is in the presence of his pastor, in the presence of his shepherd, it is safe. Hindi makalapit, maglalaway lang ang demonyo sa iyo. Pag ikaw ay konektado sa pastor mo, ikaw ay accurately, strongly connected at mayroon kang covenant relationship sa kanya, maglalaway lang ang demonyo sa iyo. Bakit? Di makalapit. Why? Because the pastor had given God the authority, the power to protect and cover you. May meron siyang pamalo, meron siyang panghampas, meron siyang tungkod. Nagkaunawaan po tayo. Kaya nga, meron akong picture, hindi ko lang mapakita sa inyo, naglalaway lang ho ang lobo. Bakit? Gusto niyang kainin yung tupa kasi alam niyo, mahina ang tupa. Pero naroon ang pastol, may hawak ho na Pamalo. Same thing in the spirit. The devil cannot attack you directly. Why? Because he knew, he knew na mayroong pastor na nagko-cover sa'yo. Kaya nga yung mga walang strong connection, walang relationship, walang covenant relationship with their pastor, these are the favorite food. They are food for the enemy. Number four, he can make you live a disciplined life. Even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Dalawa po yan. Ang staff po, yung tungkod, sa dulo niyan may kawing. Kasi pag lumihis ang tupa, kakawingin ng pastol. Pag kayong ma-offend, pag ang pastol niyo, pag may nakita po sa inyo na hindi tama, ikakawingin po kayo niyan. At mayroon po siyang isa, yung staff yun naman yung pamalo. Nagkakaunawang po tayo? Ay yung rod. Yung rod yun yung pamalo. Bakit may pamalo? Bakit may staff tsaka pamalo? Kasi mayroon talaga mga tupa na kahit anong kawing ng pastor, hindi nakukuha sa kawing, at yung dulo na kanyang pamalo, matalas po yun. At pag sinundot niya na yung tupa, ay talaga magtatanda. E may mga pagkakataon po na ganyan ang pastor natin. At kilalang kilalaman po natin ang ating mentor, eh, kung paano po siya magdisiplin sa atin. At yung iba pa mga strong length, accurately connected sa kanya, pati yung kanyang way of dealing with their uh, ships, or with their, with their uh, members, ay eh, na-apply na rin po. At nakita po namin, napaka-epektibo. Kasi pag disiplinado po tayo, na talagang sumunod sa salita ng Panginoon, magpasakop sa ating authority. Tinan niyo pa kung mabuti. Your pastor is God's authority given for you. Anong purpose? Because if you are under authority, you are under covering. And if you are under a covering, then you are totally protected. Unlike pag walang authority over you, wala kang covering, wala kang protection, then you are a food for the devil. Malinaw po mga kapatid. Pang lima, he can make you live a spirit-filled life. In verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cups overflow. My cup overflows. Ano lang pong ibig sabihin? Nakwento na ito ni Pastor. May mga pagkakataon. Pag kumapal na ang malahibo ng tupa, nakatangay siya ng mga iba't ibang dumi. At yung mga dumi na yon, nag invite ng mga niknik. At siya na i-stress. So anong gagawin ng Pastor? Kukuha ng oil. Pupunasan ito. Pampangong oil para ano? Yung mga balahibo niya pupunasan para hindi na siya may stress sa mga niknik. Same thing. 
ay mga pangyayari sa buhay natin, especially during this pandemic na marami tayong mga inaalala, mga concern sa buhay, magtataka kayo. Pag ang iba magsabing God bless you, okay lang. Pero pag ang pastor na mag at magsabing God bless you, may dating. Bakit? Kasi nga mayroon siyang special blessing na para sa iyo, intended for you, na diniposito ng Diyos sa Kanya. Malinaw ho. That is why yung iba nakakalungkot eh. Si Lord, ang, si Lord Jesus Christ ang mentor ko. Si Lord Jesus Christ ang pastor ko. Paano nangyari yun? Paano nangyari? Paliwanag nyo nga po. Kasi nasa lupa kayo, nasa langit siya. Alam na naman bababa siya. Alam nyo, by the way, pag sinasabing shepherding, hands-on ang pastor dyan. Naroon talaga siya. Hindi pwedeng hindi siya presente. Kaya nga ang Diyos, naintindihan din ng Panginoon yan eh. Kaya ang ginawa ng Panginoon, para hands-on siya sa'yo, nagpapadala siya ng pastor na tao. Hands-on sa'yo. Nagbabantay sa'yo. Nagdidisiplina sa'yo. At yun ang paraan ng Diyos. At yun ang protocol at process. At ang Diyos hindi nagbe-break ng protocol at proseso. Yan. Now, makinig kayo mabuti. Number six, He can make you live a highly favored life. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. If you're strongly connected to your pastor, you made a covenant relationship with him. And you are honorable in that relationship. What will happen? He can make you a favored life. Highly favored life. Yung goodness and love of God will follow you. Hanggang kailan? All the days of your life. Last but not the least, He can lead you and make you live in the abiding presence of God. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Verse 6. Ano pa ibig sabihin? Sa, po, sa blessing at grace na binigay ng Diyos sa pastor mo ay dalhin ka at panatilihin ka sa abiding presence of God. Naalala ko si Moises. Sinabi ng Lord dahil sila ang mga Israelita ay nagwala. Kinilala pa yung baka kaysa gintong baka kaysa Lord. At sabi nila ito ang naglabas ay sa Ehipto. Ano sabi ng Lord kay Moses? Hindi ko muna kayo sasamahan kasi baka mapatay ko pa kayo. Yung anghel ko na lang ang sumama sa inyo. Basahin niyo sa Bible. Nandiyan yun. Ano sabi ni Moses? Mautak na pastor. If your presence will not go with us, we will not leave this place. Kasi Lord, kahit ang hill ang papasamahin mo sa amin, wala pa rin katulad ang presensya mo. Your abiding presence is in, 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 incomparable. So if your presence, your abiding presence will not go with us, we will not leave this place. And that is the blessing and grace that your pastor can do to you. He can lead and make you live in the abiding presence of God. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Truth to ponder. God can only bless us through the shepherd or pastor that he had placed over our lives. My friends, in the year of governing and prevailing, ang una nating trabahuin, palakasin, at i-establisa ay walang iba kundi yung quality ng ating relationship, connection sa ating mga pastor. At sa mga pastor naman, ang paalala po ng inyong lingkod, atin din pong i-evaluate, ating i-establisa, at ating pagtibayin ang ating connection at relationship naman sa ating mentor or spiritual father. Kasi we can only give what we have. If we are not strongly connected and accurately connected and honorable in our relationship with our spiritual father or our mentor, what you saw is what you read. Kaya nga, yung mga tao naman, kung ang inyong pastor ay wala pang mentor o hindi pa strongly connected sa kanyang mentor, pray to God. Huwag mo siyang hanapan. Ipag-pray mo lang na siya po ay... Uh, buksan ng Panginoon para mag strongly connect because your job is to obey and submit to Him. But if you are obeying and submitting to your pastor, even though na siya ay nag-a-adjust pa rin ang kanyang connection sa kanyang mentor, ang blessing ng Lord, lagi niyang tandaan, God always honor the desires of our heart. He always honor the accuracy of our actions. Malinaw, ibibless ka pa rin ng Panginoon, pero mas mainam Kung yung pastor mismo, tayo mga pastor, ay strongly and accurately connected and honorable sa ating relationship sa ating mentor. Pa, paano mo masabi that your, that your relationship to your mentor is honorable? When you begin to learn how to honor him, especially with your possession, especially with your wealth. Napakahalaga po niyan. So the truth to ponder, God can only bless us through the shepherd or pastor 
that He had placed over our lives. Sa mga pastor, He can only bless us pastors through the mentor or the spiritual father that God had placed over our lives. In conclusion, only if you will just move and obey your pastor or your mentor, you're simply giving him a free hand to bring the, a difference in your life. If you want to reach your destiny, follow him, submit to him. We understand that shepherding that can make our lives fruitful is not only about the shepherd. More importantly, ayon kay Pastor Wilbert, more important of all, it is the ship's attitude. It is the mentis attitude. It is the son's attitude towards his shepherd or father or mentor that makes a difference. Trabahuin po natin ito. Bago natin matikman at maranasan ang breakthrough at ang declaration, ang prophetic declaration to become to be to receive the grace to govern and the power to prevail. Let us work out our relationship with the carrier of our grace because the Lord Jesus Christ will only shepherd us through a human shepherd. Pagpalain po tayong lahat ng Panginoon at sa mga susunod po nating uh, pag-aaral, marami po tayong mga itatalakayin pa po, mga kapatid, at uh, to ensure and to secure our victory and winning the battle from the inside out. God bless and uh, Continue to serve God and continue to be a blessing to others. Have a good and godly day. Were you blessed with the message today? If so, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell button below for updates. Thank you for watching and see you next streaming.